Thank you for clicking on this Rank the Movies video. I'm Martin Prevost, and, uh, well, I just literally walked through the door, um, a couple of minutes ago from watching The Batman. Uh, me and one of my friends, Courtney, went out and saw it tonight. Uh, we got, yeah, yeah, we decided to go see it. We decided a couple of days ago, bought tickets in advance, and we went and saw it. Uh, so here are my thoughts on The Batman. Um, as far as spoilers go... I'm not 100% sure you can spoil anything. Um, I, I can think of a few random things. Um, but for the most part, I mean, it's a superhero. I think it's harder to spoil a superhero movie because one, I mean, it's e really easy to find uh, stuff on the internet. But I'm going to try. I'm gonna, The big things, um, I'm going to try. Because this isn't a normal superhero movie with a normal superhero movie ending. Um, there's one or two big things, and I'll avoid those. Um, beyond that, I'm just going to talk how I want to um, talk. So, uh, I've got my glass of orange juice. Peanuts this time. <sighs> um, first up, I'm just going to say, um, this is the first time I've gone to see a movie in what is a fairly filled theater. Um, I think, like, only the front row wasn't sold and I maybe some of those seats were sold um so it it was very packed full of people and it got warm and this is a three hour movie so um the fact that it got warm was um definitely definitely something but yeah it is it is a three hour movie um it runs really well like it's it's very well paced it's a very dead story um if you're going well this seems like a good time to go take a pee um it's probably not. Like, something's probably going to happen. And unless you're with... Like, if you're going by yourself, don't. You're just going to have to hold it. Uh, if you're with someone, they're going to have to tell you what you missed. Because it's a fairly dense story. And there isn't any uh, really good time to get up and pee. Luckily, uh, me and Courtney both peed before uh, we went into the movie. So we were good for the three hours. We didn't have to bathroom, escape to the bathroom. Uh, though some people like, I always find this really funny in these really long movies where um, it's just people who just, I, I don't think they're aware of it, but you see them like getting up to go to the bathroom with like 10 minutes left in the movie. Like me, I'm, I'm someone, I'm very like, I, I like to know what time it is. Like not because I'm bored, not, I just like to know. I like to know how long I've been watching something. Um, all of this, so I'm a very aware person, so as the movie goes on, I start going, okay, we're like, we're halfway done, we're this far in, um, you know, so it's just always amazing when I go, okay, we got about a half hour left, and then like 15 minutes later, someone gets, it's like, oh, you, it's the ending, um, that's just me, I'm not making fun of those people, if you're one of those people, you know, that's, it happens, I mean, I'm not perfect. I've gotten up and walked out of movies at bad times to use the restroom. Uh, oddly enough, never anything over two hours. Somehow those movies, I'm just like, I, are, I, I can just sit through them. I saw Avengers Endgame three times and never got up to pee once. Uh, which is weird because once you've seen the movie once from start to finish, going back to see it again, you're pretty much cleared to go take a pee. Anyways, getting into the Batman. Um... Very well-paced, very um, dense movie. Robert Pattinson is a good Batman. I have no problem with him. Uh, there is one scene where he really does, like, he sounds like he's trying to be Christian Bale. Um, and it is only one scene. Like, the rest of it, he's got his own voice, but it's just this one scene. Like, I'm listening to it going, you sound like Christian Bale. You're trying to be, was this like the first day of shooting? Did you, like, I'm going to do a Bale voice. And they went, I shouldn't do Bale, I should do Pattinson. Um, is he the best actor in this movie? No. Um, he, he is a good actor. He carries the movie well, but I, I much, I, I really enjoyed, um, the performances by Colin Farrell as the Penguin, Paul Dano as the Riddler, um, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman gives a really good performance. Um, Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon gives a strong performance. And I actually didn't know this actor was in this movie because I didn't look up who was in it. I just know, like, who was being advertised as being in it. But uh, John Turturro plays Carmine Falcone. And 
man, I love John Turturro. He is a great actor, and he he isn't in a lot of this movie. He's in, he's probably got 15 minutes of screen time um, at the most, but man, he uses his screen time, and he owns that screen when he is on it. Um, so good. He was so good. But again, like, um, Andy Serkis is also pretty good as Alfred. He did a good job. He doesn't have a lot to do, um, but what he's got, he's good. He's good with it. So yeah, Pattinson is kind of, you know, it is, it's a Batman movie. He's the glue that holds it all together. It's a weird Batman movie because it's definitely trying to be more of a crime noir, um, kind of like, um, Chinatown or, um, ah, my, it's 11 o'clock at night. Uh, my brain's a little, because I work today and everything else. So my brain's a little, um, but it wants to be one of those. Like, it starts off with a narration by Batman, um, kind of doing that crime noir kind of narration. And he has a motor, like, it's really weird. Like, at the beginning of the movie, he's riding around in a motorcycle and changing into the bat suit when he needs to, because he's got a backpack with the bat suit in it. And then at some point, he gives up on this idea, and he's just driving the car. Uh, or riding the bike in full bat suit. It's, it's, it's weird. It's weird that he just, like, gives up. It's like, ah, sh sh screw this. I'm, just, I'm Batman. <laughs> I'm sad he never says that. He never says, I'm Batman. He says, I'm Vengeance. Uh, which I was really hoping he was going to say, I'm Batman. Say, I'm Batman. Just say, I'm Batman. I, it's classic. It's classic. Um... But yeah, yeah. Um, it actually doesn't even open up with Batman. Like, you get his narration. I don't think... No, you don't even get his narration right away. You get the first kill, which is of the mayor of Gotham City. Um, is killed by the Riddler. And then you get uh, Robert Pattinson's narration. And then it moves in to the rest of the film. Um, which, again, it's trying to be more crime noir. Seven. It's trying to be, like, seven. Um... Definitely. I got a huge Seven vibe, especially when they find uh, Riddler's, Riddler's uh, apartment. Like, it, it got a strong Seven vibe. Like, they, somebody, somebody watched that scene in Seven with uh, John Doe's notebooks and went, let's do that. We should just do that. We're doing that. Um, and uh, it's very similar, though. I think Riddler has less notebooks than John Doe. Now I kind of want to watch Seven. Um, not tonight, not tonight, Martin. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, so yeah, so it's, it's that crime noir kind of feel to it, but then, um, it shifts and it wants to be a Batman movie. And when it decides it wants to be a Batman movie, um, it does it very well. It does the crime noir very well and it shifts into the action. Um, cause crime noirs really don't have a lot of action. They're more suspense. They're more drama. Uh, they're, they're more thriller than they are, um, straight action, and superhero movies are generally action, so when it decides to go to action, it does it very well, um, it transitions nicely into the more action-y set pieces you expect from a Batman movie, um, it uses its, again, it uses its time very well, there's not a lot of, like, lulls in the story, it just keeps, tr it, because that is what, um, the crime noir is, is you need to keep building. You can't really let a lull happen because a lull ruins um, the pace of the story. So um, you have to just keep building. Like the only lull you might get is again, when they move into these action set pieces, because again, they, they're not like quick set pieces. You get a car chase in this movie. It takes 10, 10 minutes. I think it takes about 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, there's, that's, a lull, but it's an action-packed lull. You're not feeling it as if it was just, like, filler dialogue or a filler moment. Um, you really got to try to get those away when you're doing um, noir. So I, I think it transitions very nicely between them. And then, like, once the action set piece was done, it transitioned very nicely back into noir. Um, there's a scene towards the beginning of the movie where the Batman actually goes and has a conversation with the Penguin. Like, it's it's a very film noir kind of a thing that, you know, you go and interview the suspects, and you go and interview the people who might have inter information as you're piecing together um, this this crime. And it's just him talking to the Penguin in full Bat regalia. 
And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Like, that's something you wouldn't normally um, see in a lot of Batman stuff is just him. I'm sure, like, because there's so many Batman comics out there, it's happened. But, like, in the movies, in, um, in the television shows, you don't see a lot of just, like, Batman having a conversation with one of his rogues gallery. Whether they're um, to that point, because Penguin isn't. Penguin is definitely a um, sequel bait character. Um, there's there's a couple of them in this movie. Um, he's he's definitely one of them because he plays Carmine Falcone's right hand man um, with aspirations of doing more. And I think that's the sequel bait is is the aspirations paying off and him doing more and becoming a bigger crime boss. Um, a lot like the TV show Gotham, except man, he, this, the Colin Farrell looks closer to the um, more typical description of the Penguin. Like he's got that more, he's got the more robust frame and the the bigger face and the, he doesn't have the nose. That's the one thing. Like he didn't have like a hook nose or anything. Um, his nose, I think is just a little more flattened. I um, mean, he's got scars on his face, which is cool. I think this movie borrows a lot from um, the Batman Telltale series. Um, it's a video game made by the Telltale Corporation or Tell Telltale Games. Um, and I think it, I think it wanted I think it used a lot of that from its inspiration, which I think came from the comics as well. I'm just not 100 percent sure which comics. Um, it also borrows a lot from the Long Halloween, which or slightly from the Long Halloween and Dark Victory, but um, most Batman stuff does because it th those are great books. Um, it probably wanted to take Dark Knight Rises or not Dark Knight Rises, um, the Dark Knight Returns, and use elements from that. But uh, after, you know, the last Batman being Ben Affleck, who is definitely Dark Knight Returns Batman, it's, it's harder to uh, borrow from that. Um, this isn't connected to anything else. It's not like the Bruce Wayne of the Joaquin Phoenix Joker universe. And it's not, I don't think it's trying to be um, the Ben Affleck replacement for the DC Extended Universe. I think this is just a Batman all on its own. Um, this is the Matt Reeves version of Batman. Um, overall, it's a good film. I enjoyed it. Um, again, it, you need to plan it because it is a three-hour movie, um, but it's it's enjoyable. It's definitely worth checking out if you got the time. If you've got the time to sit down and watch it, watch it. It's worth it. It's it's a good movie. Um, is it the best Batman movie? No, no. I still, you know, I have a soft spot for eight, for Batman eighty nine, uh, the Batman the movie with Adam West. The Dark Knight is a great Batman movie. Um, is it better than some of the other Batman movies? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not... It's... it's. I think it's a little above average as far as live-action Batman movies go. I don't, I don't have a ranking of them right now, and uh, I'm tired, and I'm either going to miss one or I'm going to misrank something because I generally like Batman movies, and... Um, it's hard to rank them. Do I think it's better than, let's say, The Dark Knight Rises um, or Batman Begins? Probably better than at least one of those. Maybe as good as the other. It's hard. I liked it. I did like The Batman. I thought it was a very good movie. I thought it was very well done. Um, I'm definitely going to see a sequel if they make one. Um, and yeah, I thought they portrayed the Riddler very well. Um, Paul Dano does a fantastic job. I've already said this, but he does a great job playing the Riddler. And I really like that entire character and what they did with it and how they built that character. Um, yeah, no, it's it's worth checking out. If you've never seen... Uh, if you've never seen the Batman, check it out. It's new. It just came out. It's in theaters. Oh, I need sleep. Um, I'm going to wrap this up so I can sleep or probably go on a rant. I'm not 100% sure what's coming out of my mouth. Uh... <sighs> but yeah, I, I I definitely enjoyed it. I definitely thought it was a good Batman movie. Um, and I'm excited. I'm excited for whatever they do next. And I'm always excited to see a Batman movie because I really like Batman. And I'm really curious um, where they're going to go. Where they're going to take uh, the Robert Pattinson Batman and move him forward and try to create uh, this world. Because this world was very... Again, it's very noir. It's very realistic it's a very dark and great it's, 
Um, they, they do a shot at the beginning of the movie of Gotham. And it made me think of the 89 Batman. Like, it's not as gothic as a Tim Burton idea, but it's still got a nice gothic look to it. But that's also kind of noir -y. So I, um, yeah, I like the look. I like the design. It's a little dark. Like, not like you can't see what's going on dark, but it's shot dark. Um, at least the scenes at night, which it's a Batman movie. So there's a lot of scenes at night. Uh, they're shot a little darker. Again, you can still see what's going on. They're just, it's just, it's, it's kind of a dark, dark movie at times. Um, yeah, overall, uh, if you are thinking of checking it out, check it out. Uh, you won't, you won't regret it. It's a pretty, de it's a good film. It's a good movie. Um, now the big question. Well, that's a big question to me. But I just ran through my head, so I'm going to ask this question. Is it the best movie I've seen uh, for 2022? I don't think so. I truly don't. As much as I enjoyed it, and I think it's a good movie, and it's probably the best, like, <sighs> critically, it's going to be the best critical movie I've seen so far. But as far as, like, my true enjoyment of it, I, I think I enjoyed Cyrano and Death on Death on the Nile more. Um, and then that's just a personal thing. Like, I enjoyed it. Would I go see it again in theaters? Probably not. Like, I'd go with a friend. Like, if one of my friends went, hey, I'm going to go see the Batman. Do you want to go with me? I'd probably say yes. I'd say yes and go see it with them. Uh, but I wouldn't just, like, go on my own to see it again. Or, like try to get someone to go see it with me again. Uh, whereas Death on the Nile, maybe, maybe. Uh, Cyrano, I don't think it's going to be in theaters that much longer. Well, maybe. Uh, but yeah, no, check it out if you're thinking of seeing the Batman. It's not bad. It's a, it's a good Batman movie. It's a good superhero movie. Um, and it's a good start to this year's superhero films. Uh, Morbius was supposed to be the start, but it got pushed back, allowing Batman to be the start. And now... Batman's going to overshadow Morbius. Good job. <laughs> Good job, Sony. Um, you could have gotten just, like, let it, you could have just let Morbius out and let it do its thing and not be like, oh, is it as good as the Batman? And instead, like, let it just be crushed after the fact, after you've already made the money. Now it's, now you're going into it going, oh, is it as good as the Batman? And you go, no, no, it's not. I, probably not. I, I can't imagine it is. I haven't seen it yet. These are just my uh, pre-expectations. Prespectations. Okay, like, comment, subscribe. Um, I, I, I don't think I'm doing any more of these. I think... Ooh, ooh, probably sometime. Sometime in the future. <laughs> Nothing's coming to mind uh, right this second. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, check out other videos on the channel. Um, if you're like, oh, Cyrano and Death on the Nile, I don't know anything about the, the reviews for those. Uh, you got my weekly video, which this week was Shrek. I looked at the four Shrek movies. Next week, I think I'm talking Nightmare on Elm Street. <coughs> Might be Nightmare on Elm Street. Might be a different movie franchise. I don't remember. But anyways, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I will talk at you later. Have a good one.